All right, so welcome to the first edition of the Authentic Combos podcast with Joel Kleber. And my very first guest is Martin Gleeson, who is a professional athlete um, in the sport of AFL, if you're watching outside of Australia, for the Essendon Bombers, which is a great team and actually the team I support. And uh, Martin, so thanks for doing this. No, um, no worries at all. Just Happy a little quick bit of background. You actually done me a favor because we are related, so yep. you are helping me out, which is great. So I appreciate it on the first one. So maybe do you want to give us a bit of an introduction about yourself, just the general general run through where you're from yep. and um, how you got to where you are now. Yeah, so from uh, down here where you spent the second half of your childhood, down here Warner with Croyd, uh, parents, mum and dad, John and Claire have a dairy farm there um, and up to about six years old they had a potato farm as well so I don't really remember the spuds too much but um, all of us kids, I think for our 21st birthday, we got a, a spud bag. I don't know if you might have seen. I've seen the Gleason sack. The Gleason, yeah, yeah, the Gleason Brothers uh, potato sack, which is, um, <laughs> to the people listening or yeah. people that have seen it, might not seem like much, but we all love it, everyone in the family. They're so. a massive frame, just to give context, it's like a massive potato, like Hessian sack, but yep. Gleason, is it Gleason Brothers yeah, or was it? has got Gleason Brothers on yeah. it and it's got Nano, uh, Dad's, Mum and Dad's phone number on it, so 55658361. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. on there. And then... Yeah. Um, Massive frame, right? It's massive. It's probably yeah. about, oh, I don't know, a metre. It's like a footy jumper in a frame almost. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. It's probably yeah. a little bit bigger. Yeah, old Hesham sack, so that's pretty cool. And you got that in your that. home at the moment? Yeah, that's up in, uh, up in Melbourne where I live. And then yeah. um, everyone else in the family's got one as well. So my two brothers, sister, mum yeah. and their mum and dad got one as well. So pretty cool. Um, and then, yeah, so they got the cows now. they got the milk about 300 cows. Um, Daniel, second oldest brother, is working with dad at the moment. So they're there getting that done. They're just... Um, Doing harvesting at the moment, so they just finished silage, had a good season, and uh, get stuck in the hay soon. So your old man, your old man John, is still very active in the business. And he's still very active. Very turns, fit at his age. Yeah, yeah, turns seventy in March, and he's going along very well. He looks, I don't think, he looks like he's fifty, John. Yeah, so I don't. Watching. Yeah, I don't think you ever uh, ever stop working. So um, <laughs> I don't him. think you know how to. So yeah, yeah no, he's going well, and um, yeah, no, they were going well down there. And then my other brother Jonathan, he's got a uh, his own farm just around the corner in Tyrone. Um, he's out there with his wife. Newly wife, Courtney, so they're going well out there. And then... I have uh, to say his hot wife, which you refer yeah, to. Yeah, that's what he always says. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said that in his speech a few times. <laughs> he did, yeah. Um, and then sister Nicole, she is um, living up in Carisbrook with her partner, Willow. They've got a bit of a farm up there. And uh, she also nursing down in Melbourne and doing a few other little things. So how many, how many years have you been up in Melbourne now? So you come up, obviously, you got drafted, what, you were 17, 18? Yeah, 18, just turned 18. I, w- I wasn't going to show that photo. I was going to have the photo here and yeah. show it, the one that was in the local paper back then. <laughs> yeah. But um, you've come along. So now how old are you now? You're... I'm 25. I should know that myself. Yeah, 25. Yeah. So you've been up here for now seven years. So how yeah. are you finding everything overall, being up from, from Warrnambool, from Croyd, from being the farm kid, obviously, now you're in the city? Are you, you urbanised in a way? Yeah, I guess so. Home. Yeah, I um, I don't mind. I don't. I think I do enjoy getting home, and I love getting home. And I think whenever it is, one day I'll probably move out of Melbourne, hopefully. Um, but I do enjoy. I've got a lot of schoolmates up here just right now. Like I'm pretty close with a fair few of my schoolmates, and literally I live with one and my partner Amelia. Um, and then I got four or five other mates that we all live within. So we're in Flemington, and other guys live in Ascot Vale, North Melbourne. There's about five or six of us that live within two suburbs. So it's generally how it works. A lot of country kids when they come up to Melbourne, they do sort of stay in that same suburb. I had the same experience with mine as with mine as well. You know, we have all live in that same pocket, right? Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Which is great. So we catch up. I call went. So if you're on the weekend, gonna go for dinner again tonight, and I think that makes it a lot easier um, as well. So mm. yeah, no, nah, I do enjoy the city, but I think one day I definitely will, will be out. Well, how was your first couple of years up? Because you did have the share house out in um, Oak Park. Yeah, that's I right. I went out there once or twice. It was yeah. Um, Made my place look really, really clean. I'll put it that way. Yeah, no, it wasn't too bad. It was um, a bit of an experience. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all of us young boys living together in Oak Park out there. Was, we lived in this old, it was a massive house, but it was a bit older, so a bit harder to keep clean. But um, no, it was a great experience. I sort of, we're all country boys, so we all got along pretty well. And yeah. We all just knew we had, what we had to do and um, get stuck into it. So no, it was a great experience. Cool. So you've been at um, Essendon now for, was it, nearly seven years? Yeah, going to eight years. Yep. Yeah, so I want to touch on a few things now. So with this with this podcast, it's always a bit awkward. I didn't know what, like we obviously have a lot of questions and obviously when you get into it, it's a bit different. But um, there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about which I think would be interesting for people to know, which is not probably talk about as much. So let's talk about probably, the, we obviously hear about social media now and obviously with athletes, it's sort of started coming out a bit. Yep. Like you do see some people like the head of the, uh, like Dangerfield and stuff, you'll hear talking about it a lot more now. Yep. So I just want to touch a bit on that. About how do you how do you deal with social media as a professional athlete? Like what what are you actually told at the club? Are you actually yeah. even given any education from your club? Yeah. And personally, how do you deal with it or how do you manage it? Yeah, I guess social media can be used uh, in a great way. I think um, 
What are your handles first off? Yeah, handles are. I'm on, yeah. I don't even know. I think on Instagram, it's just Marty underscore Gleason, I think. And then Twitter, <laughs> I couldn't tell you. And yeah. then fa- oh, I don't know. I've got Facebook. I've only, I'm not friends with many people on Facebook. I sort of mm-hmm. try and... That's out of all the three. I try and keep that pretty close just yeah. to friends and family. So not friends with too many people on that. But um, Insta and Twitter's the one, yeah? Yeah, I sort of, I'm not too active on them. I sort of use them for myself. I love American sports. I love all sports. So I, mm. I follow a lot of sporting um, pages on them and um, it's great for me to keep up to date with all that. Then also Instagram and not so much Twitter, but yeah, Instagram, catching up, seeing what all your school friends are up to and um, pretty much everyone, we've got a big family so you can see what everyone's That's posting true. on there yeah. and um, on both sides. So you can sort of keep up with everyone on that, which is mm. great. So um, yeah, and in, in regards to what we post and all that kind of things from the club, I think they, they pretty much just say it's about just be you, be who you are and um, obviously don't be posting anything too silly or anything on there but not many guys do that stuff anyway so um yeah do you get much education on like so when you come in like obviously it would have changed a lot now in the last seven years yeah. but when you came in there as an 18 year old obviously you might have been might have been mentioned somewhere but yeah. was there any sort of like education on it from internal from an external body or anything like that yeah a little bit yeah when you first come in you you go through um in your first year the afl and the sort of clubs run a program for you and you touch on a, a various range of things um, and sort of social media is a little bit one of them. So you, you just touch on that and they go over the ways how you can make yourself more private, whatever you want to do. Um, and then from there, how to sort of deal with stuff if you ever need any help, who to go talk to or whatever it is. So um, yeah, they do. And then we we often have ongoing conversations throughout the year. Um, not all the time, but like every couple of times a year, just... Just a bit of a refresher to just say. Just a bit of a refresher, yeah. yeah. And, and sort of just how guys are coping or like, there's obviously a lot of negativity out there sometimes, which comes with it. But I think if for us, it's just understanding who's doing that and um, not to get too caught up or worry about that because the people who are writing it, a lot of them are very passionate and um, mm. like to express their views. But sometimes they're, yeah. Well, I want to touch on that now because that leads really well into the next one. Was like, how do you, yeah, how do, you deal with the online sort of yeah. stuff that's out there? Well, I'm not too bad. I don't, I sort of don't. For myself, I, I don't look at too much of it to be honest. I think I think for people to say just to completely ignore it and don't look at it, pretty naive. I think it's pretty hard in today's society and um, what we do, and because it can be used so greatly that you don't want to just remove yourself from it. If you can, and that's what you want to do, great, that's awesome. But I think for a lot of guys, it's hard to do that. So I think it's just about understanding and who the people are who are sometimes throwing out there these um, not great comments, whatever it is, yeah. and understanding that it's not really a personal attack on you. It's just they're frustrated and whatever it is. So mm. um, if you do see it, it's just like almost you can just use it a bit of comedy and have a bit of a laugh at it whatever and just... Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, it. do you do something there? I was going to say, you have a bit of a laugh at users and comedy. Like, does, you could even like get the best troll comment off the week and post it up around the locker room and say well, that, something yeah. like that. Or... No, nah, it's definitely... You see that over in the, the States. They often read out some of the tweets and whatever they yeah, get. Yeah, like the main funny. tweets, right? Yeah. You see like a main tweets or something like that. Yeah. Exactly right, which is pretty funny sometimes. But, I should uh, do it on gyms, actually. That'd be quite funny. But, um, you main, could. Yeah, we could. Oh, I definitely could. <laughs> but... um. But yeah, like something like that, because I was just going to say, like it would take a lot of your toll. The reason why I say it is because I obviously go for the club, so I do look at comments and stuff. And me personally, when I see something mentioned about, you know, whatever, it gets me bloody angry. So I'm thinking, how would that person is actually, yeah. you know what I mean? Well, I guess myself, I don't really, no one really comments on my stuff or anything like that. Yeah. I think the main ones come on sort of it's on like the, 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 the club, club posts, posts or yeah. whatever. And I and I, um, try, I don't really read any of them, to be honest. Good. Yeah, yeah, so I'm not too worried. I know there's a little bit of stuff. I know sometimes your family members or yourself or whoever it is they might say something every now and then and for yeah. me it just doesn't bother me um like obviously sometimes when you're not going great that's when it's more prevalent and you just like you, you don't have time to worry about it to be honest you worry about yourself you worry about getting your body right you worry about your form so if you're trying to put your energy into that you're probably putting in the wrong spot yeah so you both use just said as you, you deal with it but you keep your pretty private network with various stuff and you're yep. trying to avoid looking at that main sort of one yeah. where that's where that comment sort of comes definitely from. yeah just try not to worry about it. there's no point really for myself just worry about Worry on what yeah. I can worry on and, yeah, go now, from there. Now just out of interest, do people try and DM you or anything like that with, like, anything? Oh, they do a few, I think, yeah. on Facebook. Like any negativity. In yeah, terms of- on... I've had a few on Instagram, um, right. but I don't. Sometimes I don't see them straight away because um, if you're not, if, yeah, you know, it goes into the other. Yeah, how it now. works the other. Yeah, yeah. So I don't really see some of them sometimes. I don't really check that at all. And then cup on Twitter and straight away. I've blocked a few people on Twitter that sometimes tweet oh, you Twitter, straight Twitter away. Twitter can be yes. Yeah, yeah so I just block brutal. them because you have a quick look at them. You understand sometimes they might be like they're obviously a fake profile. And who knows who it is? So I just block them. Don't yeah. worry about it. And then, and you're all sweet. That's the best way to go. But do you get constant like. 
we sort of mentioned it before, but do you get constant like on like advice internally about dealing with that sort of stuff? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, the guy. I think the upstairs guys, um, the media team, they they're constantly monitoring it and having a look at all that uh, that kind of stuff. And you ever got any questions? They're they're lovely people. You can go talk to them, and they often say that. But yeah, like not too much. We we talk about it a little bit, but and how to deal with it. And we've had a few chats about it last year. I think because it's probably called, become more prevalent over the last eighteen months. Yeah. Um, but yeah, not not too much. I think you you can chat about it with your close mates, and then um, yeah, go from there if you need any more help. Yeah, so if you are doing those comments, they don't look at them, so yeah. just stop doing them. I was going to say, well, the other one I was going to bring up is the footy, the footy forums, right? Now, just out of my curiosity, if people actually check on those, you know those footy, footy forums I'm talking about, there's a couple yeah, of them. Yeah. No one actually looks at those. I, or... I, yeah, I've, I've heard of them, but I couldn't yeah. tell you where. To, I wouldn't know where to look or anything like that, right. so no, I couldn't tell you anything about them. No, that's good to hear because there's yeah. a couple of obviously ones. I won't name the forums of them, but yeah. they can be pretty, um, pretty full on. There's a lot of intense... Yeah. fan discussion on there no no it's idea quite, um, yeah, I can imagine yep it's, yeah, it's <laughs> quite funny but you're but as you said so out of those platforms obviously why as a young person do you like let's say Instagram so you got you got three you got Instagram, Facebook and Twitter yep so what how do you view each platform so what do you view Facebook for Facebook that's just for me to sort of that's a tight network I'm not friends with I'm still friends with a few people yep. but not heaps that's just mainly from school friends family um footy friends from wherever, the people I met along the way that I want to stay in contact with. So that's great. And, you, and that's the main, me- and you use that in the, obviously FB Messenger as well. That's yeah, something you use a lot. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. And it's good to keep in contact. A lot of events now are on Facebook and that kind right. of stuff. So I use that for mainly f- just for that. Um, so it's more of a family and friends network for you. you use yeah, that exactly right. Yeah. I don't, I, often you get a few friend requests or whatever, but I try not to, yeah, accept too many people I don't know or sort of I ain't too close of friends with because yeah. otherwise, yeah, it just becomes too... Sort of for sure and, yeah what about private. insta what do you like about insta yeah instagram i just like looking at photos and all that kind of yeah. stuff like i follow a few world photo sort of um pages and all that kind of stuff so i get a bit of inspo where to travel and then a lot of sport ones yeah how's the highlights all that sort of stuff yeah all them ones all the nba and uh, the basketball ones the golf ones i follow i follow a lot of, a lot golf, of golf yeah a lot of golf pages so try and learn a few new tricks off there you are a good golfer for people, bad, for people yeah. watching don't know you yeah. are pretty handy what's yeah. your handicap Oh, it's uh, just under 12. It's about 11 at the moment. So. Yeah, but you get that down. You got yeah, to... yeah, hopefully get the single figure soon. But That's the goal? Go. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, Do you yeah. play regularly? Oh, yeah. Throughout yeah. the year is tough. Um, probably varies. I might play bloody four or five times in a month and then I might play for three months. So it does vary, obviously, depending on how the body's feeling. You've got a big drive on you. Yeah? How, how far can you drive it? Oh, I, I just swing that hard. So <laughs> every now and then they go, they might go straight. And normally they go left or right or anywhere in between. So no, nah, I don't know. You can hit it. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Don't know how far I can. So who are your top followers on Instagram then? If you follow a few pages, what, what do you recommend? What's the top ones? Uh, for travel, let's say for travel. What's a good one? For travel, oh, geez, you put me right on the spot here now. I can't even. I have that wasn't on my list, so you wouldn't have seen that. Yeah, no, no. Nah, nah. What about uh, golf? Or what about the golf ones? Then? Yeah, I follow a fair few. I just follow um, the PGA Tour. It's obviously good to see that one. I follow Mark Leishman, another world yeah, expert. World so world guy, yeah. See what he's up to. Um, then there's a few other just golf um, people who put up tutorials on how to chip, putt, swing all their irons. So yeah. they one called Stability and Distance, I reckon, is a good one to follow. And then there's a few other ones in there as well. What about the basketball ones? Yeah, House of Hearts. House of Hearts. Good one, yeah. Yeah, oh, and I like following Shaq to the Fool. That's a great one. I haven't mean, followed Shaq to the Fool oh, yet, really? so I need to do it. Yeah. And I like and I, They have another one, the, the Shaq and. Uh, Barkley, I can not forget the, the TNT one. The TNT one, yeah. yeah I, find, I think they're pretty funny. Yeah. They carry on a fair bit. And it's funny seeing Shaq, Shaq get into the Charles Barkley. That's bit, right. So yeah, it's good. That's right. More about Twitter. Twitter, Twitter's more for yeah, more for just sports. Yeah, follow all, all American sports on there. I don't love NFL, but I follow a few NFL ones as well. Uh, basketball, obviously, golf, cricket. Well, how, how do you view Twitter as a platform though? Do you view it just more something for just to follow you if someone you like you like if a famous person or a brand or how do yeah, you view Twitter as using it? Pretty much just to see what people are up to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got all the basketball ones, follow a lot of basketballs, that kind of stuff, see what they're up to. So and, more as a news thing for you, right? Sports it, news sort of. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, it is. And I follow like all the night nine news, all the Vic Emergency, all them ones on there as right. well. So it's yeah. more of a news platform for so me. It's pretty much just news. Yeah, yeah but I don't tweet or anything really ever. Yeah. Um, just yeah, all news news for me. Yeah. So f- so Facebook for more family and friends and events. Yep. Messenger. You obviously have Instagram, which is more for content, like yep. just scrolling through content and stuff, like uh, some tips and hints and stuff with your golf and yep. and Twitter is more for your um, let's fight stank with news and events and sports. Yeah, news absolutely. Yeah. You don't tweet. No, no. Oh, I, every now and then I might chuck one out, but yeah, very <laughs> very rarely. All right. So don't add him. You won't. You won't see it. <laughs> all right. So well, now I want to talk about um, personal branding in athletes. Right. Yep. So you are a personal brand. Yep. Um, do you take much awareness that you are a personal brand? Like, obviously, you see some plays. Australia's probably not 
mm. big on the personal brand with them. Oh, some players would be, but America's where the personal branding sort of thing is right into it. Yeah, right. absolutely. So do you realize, well, first of all, that you do have a personal brand and how do you Yeah, that I or? do. I think that's something, yeah, you sort of work on. The clubs would always touch on it and a few you manage. They do touch on your yeah, personal brand. Yeah, they do, brand, yeah. Right? Sort of just to be who you are. And um, I think for me, I just try and be who I am. I'm from down the country so I don't try and yeah I try yeah. and oh, sometimes I might try and play that up a little bit yeah <laughs> so I act like I'm a pretty Put big farmer but yeah, yeah. yeah exactly right, right. Yeah. but nah I just try and be myself uh, I think a lot of people just like authentic people um, and I think a lot of people can see straight through people well, who that's are, why you're on so. the Authentic Combos podcast well, so that's go. good you mentioned that yeah. you left that in there that's yeah great. that's right yeah. yeah nah but I think just be yourself because I think a lot of people these days they just want real people they want to know what they're about who they are and um, yeah I think so what opportunities come it. for you with that though? So let's say, all right, so how does that work? Because I'm quite curious. So you got a manager, right? Yeah. And they say, all right, I want, they go, I would need an athlete to represent this and this. Like how yep. does that How does that all work from a branding side with yourself? Yeah, well, I don't do too much of that sort of stuff to be honest. Yeah. I'm sort of just a back pocket player and just get the fist <laughs> in there. So I'm not too worried about any of that kind yeah. of stuff. That's, I guess, for more of the... The, uh, the midfielders and the forwards who keep the goals and get all the awards. So, uh, no, we need some brands for the um, back pocket play. I don't worry about that. Nah, so yeah. I think for me, I, I don't see too much of that, which doesn't right. sort of worry me. That's just who I am and yeah. um, just go about my business that way. But for sort of the more uh, senior, more profile players, um, yeah, that's something that they'd work on a lot more, I guess. But as, but as you said, you do get, there is some mention of it. You are reminded that you are a personal brand, which obviously really got your online behavior and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, exactly right. And that's yeah. why I probably don't post a heap on Instagram or Twitter or that kind of stuff. I sort of, it's not who I am. I, I enjoy posting a few things here and there. Like I don't post heaps about footy or any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. I just sort of post a bit. No a bit action bit. training shots of yourself. Like nah, looking big and small, like, nah. not too many. Nah, <laughs> I won't find too many there. Yeah, so I might do a couple here and there, but nah. Okay. Now I want to shift across the culture now because obviously you're in a professional sporting environment and obviously culture is always a, a word that's bounded about. Yep. You know, but what does actually culture mean? Obviously in work environments and stuff as well. So what would you? What do you think are your... Obviously culture is used a lot. So yep. at your club at the moment, like what to, to what do you actually does a culture mean of a sporting club? Yep. And what is actually a good culture and how do you work on achieving a good culture? Yeah, I guess for us it's just about being in a safe environment to be who you are. We got... 44 guys on the list, another 50 staff um, in the footy department and guys upstairs as well. So for us as a whole club, it's just about being safe, being who you are and being proud of who you are. I think... Um, so when you say being safe, that's interesting. So yeah. what? So why, 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 why that word safe? Like what oh, do you mean by that? Does that just mean everyone's secure with each other or how does Yeah, it... I think it's just no judgment. Yeah, right. sort of just not being judgmental of other people, of their story, of where they've come from, what they're doing. So... It's about being accepting and understanding yeah. um, of who everyone is and um, everyone's different. That's what makes footy clubs, workplaces great, that everyone's different. If everyone was the same, it'd be a pretty boring mm. place. So, yeah, it's about being not in, in a meeting if someone doesn't know an answer. It's not a, not saying, oh, like laughing or anything like that. It's about, yeah, that's fine. How can we help you? Um, what are we going to do to help you get better and um, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I think when I say safe, it's just about being accepting and understanding of people and um, helping them where you can. Because in your environment, you have a lot of uh, you have a lot more feedback than a normal workplace, right? Yeah. Obviously, with your coaches and all that sort of stuff. So you've got that yeah. constant dialogue back and forth and yeah. all that sort of stuff. But as a group, how do you build your... Obviously, you've got your game stuff. You do yeah. your training together. But is there much mm. side outside of work or is there other activities that are break up the week deliberately that's not maybe yeah. specifically training related? Or? Yeah, no, we definitely try and catch up a bit away from the club, whether that's going for dinner, um, when the time's right, trying to have a beer together or catching up for lunches. So... I think the big thing is just about building, I talked about it before, them genuine relationships with each other. I think that's the big thing. Um, you're not going to be best mates with everyone on the list. That's the way it is. Like, mm -hmm. You're not going to have 44 best mates. But you can be um, nice. You can get along with everyone, um, be genuine with everyone. And I think in saying that, you're not going to be best mates with everyone in the club. We're very lucky at our club. We Everyone gets along really well. We're pretty young. Um, so all the young boys, I'm sort of getting a bit older now, but all the young boys, yeah, they drive. Yeah, sort of feeling out, yeah. Yeah, they drive a lot of the, the energy and excitement, which is right. great. So it's a, obviously we just started pre-season recently and it's, um, it's been a great start. Everyone's up and about, carrying on and um, yeah, working hard. That's cool. Now we're going to shift sidestep now to one of the questions I had on the list, which is about um, an agent. Now, yeah. a lot of people obviously would know American agents probably a lot more because they're a lot yeah. more out there and stuff. But in Australia, obviously, you have a player agent and representative. Can you maybe just tell people what actually an agent does for a, for you? Yep. And do you actually even need one? Yeah, you do need one, yeah. I think the um, the big thing that a player manager is great for, obviously, when it comes time to negotiate a contract or whatever, um, that's sort of, I guess, one of their main roles, there to be there and to help you and go through that and do that. I think, obviously, if you were negotiating with the club, it would be pretty hard to yeah. do that kind of stuff. So I sort of, whenever it's come time, I sort of just leave all that to my manager. I say, you do whatever you think and go with what he thinks because I trust him. So... 
Um, he does all that, and then it's obviously great when you first start. You move to Melbourne, for example, you don't you don't know who someone you can go to if you want to buy a house, house loan, all that kind of stuff. A mortgage broker, you might need an account and all that kind of stuff. So um, you got to find a manager you can trust, and then from there, um, they can help you put in contact with a lot of good people and and help you out with a lot of different things. And it's also great to have someone away from the footy club you can go talk to about footy, about life, and they can help you out. So um, that's always good as well. So how did you pick your agent? Because obviously, you would at the start, like you would have had playing when you played, was it North Ballarat? was being yep. North Ballarat back in the day. Now yep. the G- Greater Western um, Rebels or whatever. Yep. Um, how did you pick your agent? Like how many did you have to pick from or how, what was the yep. process like? Well, yeah, going through it. So when I was at the North Ballarat Rebels at the time, the regional manager, he sort of, he gets all the the letters from the manager. So he doesn't give them to you until probably about August, September, which I think is great. Cause is that just because it doesn't get your hopes too much? Yeah, or a little bit. Fo- you, got, you focus on more on the what you, you're doing? Yeah, and yeah. you're going, and a lot of people in year 12 at that stage as well, so you don't want to be spending all your time catching up with managers, worrying about that kind of stuff yeah. when you're sort of worrying about trying to worry about year 12, your studies, all that kind of stuff, and, you, and you're worrying about playing underwriting footy as well. So you probably don't need to be concentrating on that then. So, and then I think it's the school holidays. It might be one, oh, I'll test my memory, my own memory here. But around September, he, he sits you down and goes, here's all the ones, he has a bit of a spiel with you, and experience he's had with each uh each ones and then he recommends as we fired he said choose three have a chat to them and then go from there so um we done that and the manager i ended up going with um he was actually went to the school i went to in year 12 so i had met him before and um i got along his country fellow as well yeah. so made it pretty easy for me that's good and obviously your mum and dad were involved in the process yeah they exactly right they met him yeah, yeah met all along the way got a bit of a free feed here and there so that <laughs> went funny <laughs> that's good to know now I want to touch on something now. Just starts to begin was the injury you had. Yeah. So you had you had a pretty serious injury. This is when you're playing. I think it was Geelong um, in Colac. Yep. It was a while back. I'm mean, actually watching the game. And I thought you did your knee. Yeah. So I was going, oh bloody hell. Yeah. But actually, it turns out it was a lot, probably maybe worse right. in terms of the time off and the sidelines. Yep. So maybe do you want to tell us about that setback and a couple of the injuries you've had along the way. Then we'll sort of go into a bit more about you know, dealing with that and the process and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So I think it was. Oh, 20, yeah, it started 2018, yeah. um, last practice match in the last quarter, probably about 10 minutes ago in the game. I um, just went up for a marking concept for a spoil and just came down and landed. And I, I sort of didn't had no idea what I'd done because I didn't think I broke my ankle. I, I sort of rolled it. So I sort of I thought I rolled it, hobbled off into the change rooms, was talking to the doctors and physios. And um, they said, what have you done? I said, oh, maybe I just rolled my ankle. I didn't, I didn't know. Mm. And then I got uh, got in the rooms and then I still wasn't too sore. I just had a couple of pain at all. Wasn't too bad, the adrenaline, I guess, over everything. And then we were supposed to do community camping around Colac, Port Campbell, the uh, days after the game. And um, they're like, oh, no, you better go get an x ray back up in Melbourne. I'm like, yeah, yeah, righto. So I drove down myself, and then luckily, mum and dad were at the game. And I wasn't going to say anything to them. I'm like, oh, I said to dad, mum and dad, oh, can you maybe one of you drive me back up to yeah. Melbourne? I'm a bit sore. And they're like, yeah, okay, no worries. And then remember, we got halfway to Geelong, had to stop get it, uh, Melbourne, had to get a bit of fuel. And then I started to get a bit sore because I had my ankle strapped. It was throbbing and swelling so i took that off and then i saw how swollen it was i'm like oh maybe it's not as good but still holding hope got the x-ray up in melbourne at olympic park and then um the guy who does the imaging is not allowed to say if because i said to him have a but do you say anything and he's not allowed to say and he goes oh i can't say but are you sore and i said oh not too bad and then i had a couple of missed calls from the doc read and he said you gotta go straight to hospital you gotta really bad broken ankle and then all of a sudden it sort of started to hurt got up there um i could sort of feel my bones in my ankle moving around and that which wasn't great feeling and then yeah so i ended up breaking there's a bone in your ankle called your talus and i snapped that in half and then my sub talus which is like heel bone i pulled that forward about a centimeter dislocated with it so um i remember looking at the x-ray at the time and i couldn't see i'm like where's the break and they're like well that that's supposed to be one bone and that's supposed to be like oh okay there you go Mm. so next morning went in got like so it all happened very quickly. This happened on the Sunday. The Monday was a public holiday, but the surgeon came in and um, I was getting surgery at 7.30 in the morning to get four screws in there to put it back together. So it's a bit of a weird injury. Um, Doc Reed, he's been around for years and I think he's never really ever seen it. Um, physios only ever saw it, I reckon, twice. And this was from two people that were escaping prison together and they jumped from about a 10 metre high barricade down to concrete and landed. So that's how you sort of do it. And, right. Uh, yeah, still a bit bemused how I'd done it but yeah yeah it happened so it's a pretty serious injury I think 
sort of for older people, they might struggle to ever run again. I remember the, the, the surgeon telling me before the surgery goes, yeah, hopefully it'll all go well and you'll be right to go again, but there's a possibility that you might be able to run again. Wow. So with so with the um, the initial injury, because I remember the diagnosis was eight weeks. Yeah. You know, when that, yeah, you know, I think it was about, it might have been about 12, yeah. Eight to 12 or whatever it was. Yeah. And then obviously it kept getting put back and put back and put back and put back. And yeah. I remember just going around to yours and seeing you because like how long, you didn't know how long you had to have the actual boot on, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, You kept nah. it on for longer. So how long did you actually have the moon boot on for itself? Oh, I was in the moon boot for about four months. So I was on crutches and moon boot for about three months. Oh, I had plaster for the first couple of weeks yeah. and then... I went crutches and moonboot for about three months and then moonboot by myself for about a month. Now, did you exactly, like, after you did the injury, like, how yeah. quickly did you find out how serious it was in terms of, like, because obviously the diagnosis was eight to 12 weeks or whatever the, the injury yeah. was saying, but did you find out how really serious it was? Probably haven't sort of really until sort of, I reckon, I got back playing and then you sort of start to talk to the doctors and the physios about it and they sort of say, yeah, look, obviously they still don't like to give much away, but mm. talk to the, uh, the doctors and, and even the surgeon, like, yeah, it's very serious, like, there's a, yeah chance yeah. that other stuff could have happened or whatever but uh, yeah I guess you're just trying to block that out not worry about it yeah so what was the first couple of weeks like post the injury yeah that was shocking pretty I was, lonely I can imagine yeah, yeah I was very lucky my girlfriend Amelia she took a couple of weeks off work which was awesome I would have been I, I don't know I wouldn't have been able to get through without her the first couple of weeks like I couldn't do anything I literally go to bed have my ankle raised in the car so I was taking all the pain relief I could Anytime I put my ankle below sort of my heart, I'd get this shocking throbbing against the car. So it was worse than breaking my ankle. Yeah. And I'd sort of quickly hobble down the couch, stay there all day, um, foot up, have to go to the bathroom and try and have a shower in between, which is pretty tough. And get food bought to me all day. How did you foot out the shower or yeah, was, garbage, garbage bag on it? Garbage bag on it. Yeah, the garbage bag. There. Yeah, so that was very tough. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, yeah, so that was pretty tough the first couple of weeks. Um, and I had to sort of have this blood clotting injection every day as well because you're really? sort of lying down so you're more prone to getting clots and I hate hate injections so that was a pretty tough one um, having to get that so yeah I didn't know that so just, what, yeah. did you have to administer it yourself or have yeah oh, Amelia girlfriend she don't yeah, yeah so yeah look, look away and just, yeah I had yeah. to look away well, first few times I nearly fainted but then I sort of <laughs> half got used to it but yeah um, so that was the first yeah. sort of two weeks that was that was shocking like I, I remember after like 10 days I rang up the doctor I'm like, like is this going to get better like I, I couldn't couldn't deal with it anymore. It was so painful. It was shocking. Um, then I sort of just turned a corner and it started to go okay once I got the cast off. Yeah, so so your headspace during that first couple of weeks would have been all over the shop and yeah. you know, as you said, you had that support of your of your partner, yeah. which was really good and obviously you probably got really good at Call of Duty and FIFA and, yeah. and whatever else. Um, but post that couple of week period, then mm. what happened then? Did you have to go in the club and like, here's your plan, here's your rehab plan? What happened from there? Yeah, pretty much. So after I got the cast off, I was able to sort of, I was lucky it was my left foot, so I was, I know I got an automatic car, so I was able to start yeah. driving in the club, which is good. Um, get in there and start seeing the physios and pretty much just getting physio every day, really light, just, they were just massaging you, getting the blood going and whatnot and trying not to make it too, uh, let it get too stiff, so. So the problem was the blood wasn't it getting to the, it was hard to get blood to the. Yeah, so with the know. bone that that's down your ankle, it's sort of, the blood supply can be limited and if you leave it like uh broken too long without putting it back together it might the blood supply might get there and your bone can die so that was an issue early on having to worry about that making sure it was all good but i was lucky i had a top surgeon who put it together back you could hardly tell anything's wrong with it now yeah. besides the screws in there so yeah so how'd you keep yourself focused during that because it was 18 months really when, when did you actually play your, your first it was 18 months something wasn't it yeah so i done it in sort of march and then i played start of March and I probably played my first uh, VFL practice match it might be in the start of April so it was about 13 months but yeah I had a few other things in there that stopped me from getting back playing seniors I think it was about round 15. Yeah so it's because there would have been other things sort of like you haven't you know other but you get other sort of like pains and stuff. Not too not bad really yeah because we, it was a pretty slow build up just yeah. because I started running and say um, I reckon it might have been it was the end of August it was the start of September yeah when I started running after breaking in and then I built up for about six months um, very slowly because just because it was so stiff, it took me a while to get going. And um, we're just trying a few different things along the way just to make sure I was running properly because no point starting to run if you can't run and you're using other yeah. parts of your ankle, foot, your body, whatever it is. So just making sure that was all good. And then, yeah, and then uh, first game was out at Craigieburn against, I think Coburn. it was Coburn. That's I was right. there, yeah. Yeah, 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 so just played a half. and. I remember that and I was sort of like, I look back now, I'm like, I don't know how they let me play. Like, I was still like pretty sore in my ankle going into that game and hobbling really? around a bit, but got through and that gave me a lot of confidence and then I sort of went from there. Yeah. yeah. What was those first five minutes like? It would have been pretty. Yeah, I was sort of just a bit of a headless shot. I can't really remember any of it, to be honest. Like, 
So I remember I was there with your mum and dad, and yeah. I was sort of pretty. I was holding my breath a little bit just to yeah. make sure. That once you still had that first kick or first touch, it's sort of like, oh, it's all right. Yeah, it got going a little bit, and yeah, and we were sort of we were playing pretty well that day in the VFL, so that was yeah. a, um, made it a bit easier down there. But yeah, that just gave me a lot of confidence, even though it was just a half skit going again, and even though I didn't feel great out there, just to know that I could do it, and then um, from there I sort of turned another corner. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you keep yourself focused during that whole time? Because there's obviously a long way to be mm. away from it. You would have been hating not being out there. Yeah. Like my, people might not know, it, but you are pretty. I reckon you're pretty competitive. Yeah. Yeah. So secretly competitive. Yeah. But you would have hated it. But how did you keep yourself focused on that? Because it's a long time. Well, it's, like, it's longer than a knee recap, mm. right? Mm. So how did you just keep yourself focused and determined and on track to get back? Yeah. Well, I guess I done a few different things. I um during my time I went upstairs the club done a bit of work in the finance team because I thought that's something that would be interesting. You worked in the finance team. Yeah. Right. I just went up there. I, well, I didn't do too much to be honest. So <laughs> I just went out there a few times, yeah. maybe four or five times um, over the space of a couple of months, just to go up there and sit in them a couple of hours at a time and see what they do and what it's about. Because I like numbers, I like math, so I thought that's something I could be interested in. So I went and done that, and then I guess, but in rehab, you, you sort of you do almost, especially in season, you do pretty much double double the time everyone else does. So you sort of just got to concentrate on getting your body right. You don't have too much other time to think because a lot of people sort of say you, you'd have had all these spare times or all this stuff, but. It's sort of nearly the opposite. So, because you're in there, you got to do all your own rehab bits. Then you try and be around the team for all their meetings and all that kind then of you stuff. You do more and, after that, and you got to do more yeah. after that. So, I was sort of lucky and unlucky for him. But Josh Begley done his knee at the sort of a similar time to my ankle. So we spent a lot of time together, done, done a lot of rehabs together, and um, we sort of able to lean on each other. There was days where I might be flat and he'll be good, so he get me up, or he might be flat, so I can help. So. We were able to bounce off each other and there was other guys in rehab a lot as well, um, Joey as well. So we always used to carry on and have a bit of fun as well and got a great um, rehab coach and physios and all that kind of stuff, which you spend a lot of time with them. And so they're great people, and which makes it a lot easier. Well, how, are you, how are you able to quiet your mind during those times of negativity and self-doubt? Because I'm sure there would have been a lot. Yeah, uh, there, there was. Period. Like, would there, been, like, there would have been a stage where you might not even thought you could have made it back because obviously yeah. it was such a, once you've understood the seriousness of the injury. Yeah, there was. And I think being sort of still young and pretty naive that you sort of, them, them thoughts do come in, then pretty much straight away, you sort of pretty young and naive, like, ah, should be right, all, be all, good, mm. all good, like that, nothing like that would happen to me. So um, I guess it's good being young and pretty naive in that sort of sense. But um, yeah, they did, and I, I you just have conversations with people and, and it's okay to feel like that, you're gonna feel like that. It's what you go through is just, that's, that's completely normal and just have them chats and make sure you talk about it and then you go from there. Did you talk to many people at the club? Like, is there a club like sports psychologist or anything like that? Yeah, we got we call him the mental skills coach. I got him. Oh, they call the mental skills, skills coach, coach now. Yeah, so that's yeah. the new word, right? Mental skills, skills I like that, mental skills, skills coach, coach, right? Yeah, so that's nah, he's, he, he's spot yeah. on. He's really good. So I used to catch up with him a bit, just have general chats. It wouldn't just be about myself, it would be about other things as well and then um, court, you, you chat with um, I used to chat with a lot of the coaches as well and you look at other sporting other sporting codes and um, uh, like a lot of other stars from other sporting codes have gone through um, significant injuries and they've come back and, and played and you wouldn't even know they, they've probably had an injury so yeah. um, you sort of take a bit you look at that and take a bit of inspiration from that Is that something that you proactively sort of like they man, like as a mantra nah, thing or yeah, with I, mental skills coach? Yeah, no, Is that I, what I call them now? So sports yeah. psychologists now call oh, well, That's skills. what we call because I right. guess because he's not really I don't know Sports psychologist, he sort of he he just helps us perform. Like yeah, it's yeah. not just, you don't just go if you have got an issue or a problem. Right. You go and say how can I get better and um, perform on game day concentration or whatever it is. So yeah. I guess that's where the kind of terminologies come from. But is that something like a practice thing on your behalf or yeah, that, no, or you're well, sort of I, mandated to do it? Or well, I knew so we had James Kelly at the club and I knew he broke his leg pretty badly yeah. early days. So I went and sort of saw him and had a chat. And so he sort of set, used to send me like he probably sent me four or five good zocos over the time just on sports people from other codes who have gone through either tough times. Um, Can you name one of them? What was it? Well, Tom Brady was one. So he, yeah. early in his days, I'm pretty sure, hopefully I'm not stuffing this up, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure Tom Brady, yeah, early days, he done his knee. Um, yeah. Not many people know about it. Brady was on his ACL, yeah. Yeah, and then he's come back and um, now he's still probably going. the greatest of all time and yeah. um, still going. Obviously, probably different ballpark, Tom Brady and myself, but you sort of see someone like that who's come back and had a, a great career and mm. uh, from a pretty serious injury. So the positive reinforcement and just reflecting the similar people, that sort of helps you yeah, obviously had a lot of support. Yep, what absolutely. Would you, what would you recommend to someone who's just a weekend warrior, just a general yeah. member of the public, not saying you did a serious injury like yours, but what would you recommend? Stuff like maybe watching a documentary or two or yeah. seek out people who's got another, who's had a similar injury maybe at the club. or Yeah, that, that's always good. You, always, you, just, you can always learn off other people. A lot of people, they've got a lot of great experience and um, what to do, what not to do. So just always try and um, learn and seek what you can and do and um, 
sometimes, yeah, it might be better to take a bit more time off than try and rush things back. And yeah. um, it's okay to take a week off and get away, escape footy or anything at local level instead of trying to push it back and then you might end up falling further behind. So yeah, just listen to your body, listen to your mind and go from there. Well, just out of interest, in general, like obviously there's a lot of pressure for yourself. But what, what do you do personally? Like obviously in terms of uh, if you have it like a down day or something yep. like that in the club environment, is it something where you go talk to a mental skills coach or you talk to your partner? Or what do you personally do as a... Yeah. Do you meditate? Do you do yoga or whatever? Uh, I don't do too much of that. It's something I actually do want to try and get into a yeah. little bit though. Um, I think early days like, nah, I don't want to do any of that. It's not I can me. imagine, I can, yeah. Yeah, pretty stubborn. But now I'm sort of like a lot more open to it. And I have done a little bit of it last year, which I did enjoy. Of, yo- of yoga or... Oh, or sort of just mindfulness, yeah. A few mindfulness, mindfulness okay, yeah. yeah. So just doing that, just... Was listening. that with an app or was that with yeah, the just club? Yeah, or... just with an app, yeah. Do yeah. a bit at the club. Which uh, one were you using? Calm or were you using like... Uh, Stop Think Breeze one. Stop Think Breeze? Yeah. So there's a Headspace app as well. Yeah, there's yeah. there's Calm one I've used as well. So you can use them and they're great. They can just literally just listening to your body, go through it. And yeah. um, something I started to enjoy in at the club, yeah, the mental skills coach has a bit of that as well. So yeah. um, just a bit of grounding, we call it before game. Just go in and just calm down and check in and see how you're feeling and go from there. Yeah, that's quite interesting. So you do that. So you've come around to that now, and you've actually yep. seen the benefits of it for you. I think so. Yeah, because on game day, especially, I, I like it. Then you can get pretty worked up, and which is great to have that adrenaline. But yeah. you sort of got to use it at the right time. So it's good to sort of before a game just to check in, see how you're feeling, um, what's going on, focus in on what you got to do for the game, and uh, go from there. Even in general life, though, if you do that as a regular sort of thing, it you find it helps you. Or, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's not just for footy. Yeah, it's about we live in a hectic hectic world and hectic mm. city so it's just about sometimes taking 5, 10, 20 minutes whatever you got um, doesn't matter if it's only 5 minutes just to check in see how you're feeling um, what you focus after the day or whatever it is it might be your job what you do so just mm. focusing on and then um, knowing your focus and going from there and just out of interest do, do, do clubs have mental wellness policies or do you have like a something in place where there's like guidelines or something obviously it's a bit more prevalent now in the me- we actually got another guest coming on who's probably more can talk about this regarding yeah. Uh, his sort of stuff but is there anything in place at the club level regarding that if someone's got issues or something like that yeah I, I think every couple of weeks every fortnight you sort of do a bit of checking you, yourself it just goes to a couple of people at the club and then if you obviously if you're anything flags there they can come over and chat to you but if not yeah there's there we got multiple people you can go sp- speak to at the club about whatever and um, obviously a lot of guys got a lot of good mates at the club as well so often uh, bounce ideas off each other yeah. instead of going to see um, some of the other people which is fine and then if sometimes if you um, which hasn't happened but if you mate if you feel like your mate needs a bit more help you can obviously go stand out someone else to, to try and help them as well yeah that's good now just out of interest you mentioned mentors before obviously one of them can help you get through the stuff with your previous injuries so at the club do you have like a set mentor you're assigned or how does that generally work obviously you can go to anyone yeah but do you out, even outside the club do you have a mentor or someone you sort of regularly refer to or yeah not really I think out? yeah when you first come to the club you sort of you often you, uh, you always just look up to the older guys the senior guys who played a lot of footy and they're all great they're always willing to help with you whatever it is go through vision extra stuff out in the footy field um, even just for a life chat so um, that's something great about a footy club, but you sort of don't really have anyone specific. Uh, I can't say that word yeah, specifically. Yeah, yeah, aligned to. Um, you watch vision from other clubs, of other players, and all that kind of stuff as well. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think you have anyone. What about business? Because you said finance before. Yeah. So what about? Is there anything in business, or do you seek it? Well, obviously, because with clubs, I don't think people realise you obviously have a lot of people like the, the groups like outside. Yep. Those all those um, yeah, what are they, law, the law dons. Yeah, and yeah the, there's a lot of credit groups. Everyone would have yeah. those. So how do yeah. those actually? For people, it's probably quite interesting. You have all these business successful yep. business people involved in the club. Yeah. Do you do you seek them out or how does that? Yeah, no, I, I have got there. Were, uh, probably I think it was twenty seventeen. I done a bit of work with a guy, Wes Fleming, who's um, yep. got his Fleming's nursery somewhere out here actually, and he does really. He, yeah, he's got his nursery okay. and he does landscaping and all that as well. Yep. So I um. Because you want to be a landscaper, didn't you? Yeah, I do. I, and I still do enjoy that, but yeah. probably well, not. There's always time. a Jim's Mowing franchise or something. Yeah, yeah get, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I done a bit of work experience with him and his team for a, probably uh, half a year, which yeah. was great. So um, caught up with him and he like he's someone that I still keep in contact with now, who's a great person. And, and they we're so lucky. You just got to be willing to go out and have a chat and um, not be shy and just go out and have a chat to these people because they're all great people mm-hmm. and um, they've got a lot of uh, knowledge and experience and they, they just want to help you. So um, that's the, that's one area extremely lucky. Yeah. Yeah, because you get offered you, you you get a lot more opportunities via those channels. Obviously, during like you could just pick basically what if you had an interest as you said finance, you could pick yeah. someone involved in finance and maybe approach it to do. A, pretty lucky like that. Yeah, yeah, we can pretty much just go see our player development manager and say, right, what are you interested in? And um, okay, these might be the areas. So then you can go from there and 
um, and they'll have a look at who at the club they can sort of get in contact with and you just got to be willing to go have a chat, have a coffee with them, whatever it is, um, get to know them and yeah, we're very lucky. Have you done that a few times? Like, yeah, obviously, you've heard that guy yeah. before. Uh, yeah, Wes, I've caught up with a few other people. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. And they're, they're just all lovely people. They're just always willing to have a chat and just want to help out. I think you should put yourself out there a bit and let them know you're interested. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. And just be yourself. And um, and yeah, they love that. Cool. Now, basically, you're just talking about that now. Move sort of post that. Actually, is there any sort of particular tools that you've learned or mental mindsets that you reckon you could take post career out into? into the workplace obviously you're in a professional like you're in an intense yeah. environment now is there anything that you've learned that that you think is going to be applicable to your life post footing yeah i think a fair bit i think just um always just being doing what you can always hard work and i think a lot of people these days always trying to take shortcuts and do the easy way but just do what you got to do it's pretty simple and mm. pretty easy but um i don't think i think that's something that we actually had a chat to a few people in the construction industry about and they're like just they were like what can we do to get ahead and they're like just do your job do it well um don't try and take so you just shortcuts. chats to people in the construction industry. Yeah, yeah, right. just yeah. A few of us just sat down, and had a bit of a chat right. with a few people, and yeah, a few people were just asking questions, and they sort of said, yeah, just just do your job, do it well, like, and then don't be afraid to ask questions, um, seek out help and advice where you can. I think a lot of people sometimes might feel a bit shy, or embarrassed if they don't know how to do something, but just ask questions and. Um, yeah, you're only going to learn to get better. And that's also on the business to create a culture where they can can feel as though they need to do that. As you said, exactly I, right. I think before referencing something you said, which is people do feel stupid sometimes and they get yep. ridiculed if they ask the question, especially yep. in some intense corporate environments. So yeah. it would definitely be like that. So Exactly right. So that's that, yeah, that's a big thing, just ask yep. questions and don't feel stupid for asking any question. So what are you building outside of yourself post-footy? What yeah. are you, mate? Are you going to do a landscaping business or are you going to do a finance <laughs> thing or are you going to run toll with toll holdings or what are you going nah. to do? <laughs> well, I'm at uni at the moment, yeah. so I'm starting a business as, which is an economics and finance degree. So a bit over halfway through that. It's a bit of a change for you. I didn't yeah. Know you, I, knew, I didn't know you would go down that way. but Yeah, I'm just doing it at the moment because I think it's pretty broad and could sort of lead to anywhere. So I'm doing that. I am enjoying it. Something, yeah. something I, Like when I was sort of out of school, I was pretty happy to be finished school for just for a little bit and mm. happy to time off. And now I'm pretty happy I'm back and doing a bit of study. And um and enjoying that, so I just go there at the moment. I'm just about choose it through uh, RMIT. So yeah. we got a bit of affiliation with them, so they're awesome. So go on there Monday nights about six thirty for about three hours. On Monday night just to nut, nut out me, shoot me lecture, and uh, and then do. Is that, is that the city campus there? Yeah, it's yeah, the city, it's not a bad one. Yeah, yeah so it's, yeah, it's good yeah, it's campus good. there. So just go in there, get that done, and. So I had my exam a couple of weeks ago, but um, I was away, so I got that in any That's true. couple of weeks. So. You were away? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. had a nice trip over, overseas? Yeah, it was a training camp, that one. I had to say that it was a training camp. Training camp, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a um, cultural training camp that's overseas. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, all good. All right. So, <laughs> but what, what, so basically, you're going to study that degree. Do you know exactly that what you want to do with that degree or something? Nah, no idea. So I think oh. for myself, I'm just literally have sort of touched on just trying to meet as many people I can while I'm, I'm playing footy. Um, they're all great people and they, they will help you post-career as well, which is a great thing. So just trying to meet them. So does that communicate to you, you when you say post-career? Do they let you know that or is that something that you know you could if you wanted to go down a certain channel, you could have that contact already made the network? Already yeah, made. well, I think the big thing is just about making the most of the time while you're, while you're playing footy. Yeah. Um, just meeting as many people while you're playing. So then one day, if you do need help, Whatever industry it is, um, yeah, they'll be more than willing to help. And even if it's not in their industry, like a lot of these people are, are very successful and they they'll know people that can help you. Yeah, because people, you got a massive network, and people obviously there's massive. a heap of those groups who just want to be involved and help. Exactly help right. Everyone out. They're just great people. They're just like helping helping young people um, have it, who want to have a go. Yeah, cool. So we'll see what you do with the economics. I didn't know economics. So I thought yeah. you said finance. So economics. Oh, so right. I didn't realise it was for economics as well. Economics is not easy. But nah, it's not. I'm doing investment <laughs> at the moment. It's just, yeah, it's just a bit, <laughs> bit tough, but it's all right. Ah, well, is, how many subjects is it? One, one a semester? Yeah, I'm just doing one a semester at the moment. So, ah, yeah. It's nice and easy, mate. You yeah, do right. Exactly right. time. Yeah. So what do you like to do in your free time then? Yeah, well, obviously do a bit of uni and a bit yeah. of uh, study for that. And then love playing me golf and then just catching up with the boys, going to sit at a cafe for a few hours, just talk. We talk a lot of random stuff about <laughs> everything, so um, trying yeah. to solve the world's problems or new inventions, ideas we got. So yeah, new inventions and ideas. Yeah, I just just random stuff. I couldn't tell you anything <laughs> else, but yeah, what it just yeah. And you get home right. back a bit to Warnall. Yeah, try and get. Oh, Croy, sorry. Yeah, try and get yeah. back there a, a fair bit. It's obviously pretty tough this time of year, like pre-season and training. Have a big week and it's pretty tough sometimes getting in the car for three and a half hours, mm. get home for twenty. Oh, you're on a long way for three and a half hours. Yeah, you I'll, I'll, I'll Croy, a bit further. <laughs> that's home. true. Yeah. That's true. But um, yeah. yeah, get home, then you're sort of home for 24 hours and then travel back up can be pretty time consuming and it's pretty, pretty tiring because then coming Monday, big session and um, if you're not ready to go and perform and get better, it can be pretty tough. So uh, it is pretty tough this time of year in the off season, which we just had sort of 10 weeks off, got home a fair bit and 
we're hung over the Christmas New Year period, but apart from that, it can be pretty tough. Do you get back there in the milking at all? Help help your help yeah, your yeah, brother, no, help yeah, your brother every, and dad out? Yeah, every time I'm home, I'm up at 5.30. Get bossed around? Yeah, up at yeah. 5.30, down milking the cows and then at night, so yeah. yeah. Nah, I'm not really. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I've I, I done a bit growing up. I didn't mind it, but I was pretty lucky to have my brothers. They love it. Um, they do most of it. I, a couple of years ago, Jonathan, um, he's got his own farm, had to go away for a week, so it was in my off season, so I went out and milked out there for yeah. stayed out there for yeah, for four or five nights and done the morning and night by myself, which was good. So do a couple of extra weight sessions yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly there, right, yeah. yeah, exactly right, which is all good fun. So <laughs> now do you have a passion or goal that no one knows about? Obviously you've said you don't know what, but is there something like the reference I put on the question list, I did send some questions before, yeah. was like Homer Simpson wanted to own the Dallas Cowboys. Now is yeah. there something that you want to ideally do one day or is there something yeah, no I one think... really knows about or I think it's pretty, um, this one's pretty stereotypical, I reckon, it's sort of Melbourne thing, but I'd love to, sort of, or even almost a warnable thing, that correct thing that I'd love to go live over in London for a year, I reckon, yeah, I think just to get out of Melbourne and experience something different, um, I'd love to go do that whenever, if I can do that, I don't know if I will be able to, but... Yeah, I got to be under the 30 year, 30 under for that two year. Yeah, so I got love to go do that, but whether I can or not, um, either London or New York. I've been in New York and New York uh, could be good. Pretty cool city. It's pretty fast paced. Pretty different. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love to try and do either of those. Go for a year and work in a bar, or what would you? do? Yeah, literally, I wouldn't care what I done. Working in a bar, poor pots, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, a bit of labour, and that nah, wouldn't bother me. Just, bit of labour, yeah, yeah. something different. Yeah. Cool. All right, now we're gonna get to a couple of rapid fire questions. Here, so those ten questions. They're yep. pretty easy. I didn't didn't show these two ones before yep. so I'll just run through them real quickly obviously you're a massive sports person so in terms of what you like in terms of NFL and all sorts of stuff so you've got a couple of questions here so I'll run through them real quickly yep. just tell me your first response Messi or Ronaldo Messi Messi yeah why is that I know left foot I don't see too many left foot soccer players <laughs> <laughs> fair enough alright favourite social media platform uh, Instagram Instagram yeah why is that just for the just the sports highlights and all just that the sports stuff. highlights yeah. favourite NBA player Oh, this is a tough one. Mm. It's supposed to be rapid fire. No, I love Westbrook. No, no, I always loved him. Love Paul George as well. Lo- oh, I'd say Paul George. Yeah. Paul George. Yeah. All right. PG thirteen. I used yeah. to it used to be Westbrook, and I still love him. He'd probably be my second favorite. But Paul George, just the way he goes about it. You didn't uh, see that dribbling clip the other day when he's dribbling around in the circle Westbrook for Houston? Did you oh see yeah, that? I saw that. Yeah, and then he ended up. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Yeah, and then he just lost it, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he did. PG thirteen. Okay. So yep. Three things on a, only on a desert island. If you could take three things. Yeah, only three things. <laughs> I knew something like this would come up as well. And I, uh, this question always comes up in rapid fire ones, and I never yeah. have it. I never have a good. I'd say a boat. A boat? Well, that's yeah, that's pretty good. Some, yeah. some extra fuel. Some extra fuel. And a bit of food. Oh, very, 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 very logical. Right? Very logical. What's the food though? Only one food. Pizza. Pizza. Yeah. You know, cold pizza, right? Yeah. Cool. No, right. I'll, boat's pretty good. It's got a microwave on it. <laughs> <laughs> What's one thing you could uninvent? Uninvent. Yeah. I've had a ripping answer to this. I'll show you off camp with this one, but oh, one thing you can uninvent. Yeah, uninvent. That what you could wish you could uninvent. Gee, that's a tough question, isn't it? Shouldn't be tough, but it is. Mm. Uninvent broccoli. No, not broccoli. Brussels sprouts. I like broccoli. Brussels, Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. There we go. Yeah, sure. All right, cool. <laughs> there we go. What's your favorite NFL team? NFL. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't follow it too much. I like watching uh, Lamar Patterson and so he's at Baltimore. The Ravens? Yeah. So. Oh, uh, Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson, yeah. yeah. yeah the new Michael Vick. Yeah, so I've, I watch a fair few of his highlights and yeah. how um, good he is in uh, passing and rushing. He's so done the moment. He's good, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the old Lamar Jackson. So he's your favourite player on, the, on your yeah, team? Yeah, he would be, yep. All right, Lamar Jackson, he's a man. What about favourite band? Favourite band? Yeah. Oh, I have to go for actual band. I go Coldplay. I went and saw them probably about Coldplay. Yeah, when they were in yeah. Australia, right. probably four or five years ago. I went with all my schoolmates, and it was a yeah, it was a really fun night. I'd say actual, like they're an actual band. So <laughs> I'll go then. There's a lot of other music you sort of like. Well, but what do you listen to then? Oh, I listen to everything. I've known you too much as a music person, so I want to. Nah, I'm, I'm not much of a music. To actually I'm not much music. of a music person, but I listen to I listen to literally everything. I love mm. the classics. I got a good classic playlist that I made on Spotify, <laughs> and then try and listen to a bit of new hip stuff. So I think I'm pretty cool. You know, I listen to that. Do you listen to stuff pre-game or? Uh, I don't nah. have my headphones in. We got a bit of music playing in the change yeah, rooms, yeah. but no, nah, I don't. Nah. Cool. What about your pre-game superstition? Do you have a favorite pre-game one? Not really. Only the sort of night before, I try and have a pasta and sometimes a bit of a pizza but no nah, I, don't, I don't have any now nah, yeah. at all so i rock up at different times probably every week not intentionally just how it is and yeah nah. 
You do well. The one there's one thing I know is you do a lot in the game. It's not a pre-game superstition. There's one habit. You see when you had the long fringe, you always yeah, doing I know. that. I try and get it a bit shorter. Yeah, that's why I've got a bit shorter now. <laughs> I know you always get in the eyes, so I always try and get that a bit shorter. Because I didn't want to give like get haircuts every second week, but now yeah, I sort of yeah. That's true. And what about your favourite player at the club? Favourite player at the club? That's a tough one. I know, that's all, a tough one. They're all my favourite for that reason. Yeah, no, they're all my favourite. Yeah. All favourites. So no, I can't pick anyone. Who's a couple of the, the the old ones you look up to though? Who's a couple of the ones you? Well, I'm getting old now, so yeah. yeah. You are, aren't you? Yeah. 20, 20, 25. I think, so. I, mean, I think I had it up the other day. I reckon about the 14th oldest at the club now. So 14th oldest. Yeah, yeah. I reckon. I mean, yeah, I think I'm about 14. But no, since I got there, I've obviously been in the back line. So Hooksy and Hurls are two people I've always yeah. looked up to, and they've helped me out enormously over my career. Well, so it's pretty quick. Seven years, you know. I remember mm. it was only yesterday when literally. Yeah. Got you obviously put an extra 20 kilos and. No, you have. I just got drafted about 67. I'm about 84, yeah. 85 now. So I can lift a few, few, few heavy weights now. So You're stronger than you. Oh, well, you get there. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the best bit of advice you've ever been given? Best bit of advice. See, this is another question I always have, and I still don't know what to sort of <laughs> say. I think just be yourself, be yeah. you. Don't worry about trying to impress um, anyone else. Just be you, and people like you. people will like you for who you are. Now, I want to t- I'll tell you something. that Now, that's the end of it. So, thanks for doing this. Really yeah. much appreciate it. All good. Um, and obviously, follow Martin on his social handles. I can't remember. Was it Marty underscore 35 or something on Insta? Uh, it might be just Marty underscore Gleason, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure if you punch him on um, Twitter. Don't yeah. don't tweet at him. He's not going to respond. Yeah. Don't abuse him as well. But um, <laughs> Instagram, obviously, you can follow Marty. I know you do post some stuff on Instagram yep. occasionally. Yeah. I was actually going to say, do you know why I call you Martin at the start of the interview? Because I, I always refer to you as Martin. I never, yeah. I never, call, I never call you I Marty. You know I think his mum always calls him Martin, probably close but your so you you know you remember your mum's dad yeah, yeah. our granddad yeah. his name was martin yep my yep. middle name's actually martin it is it is i didn't even know that so i like hearing my own name. i didn't know your middle name was martin. correct no, it go. is so i've got two i think names. i didn't know that actually yeah, yeah so that's why i say i always call you martin i don't call you marty yeah, everyone says yeah. marty i say no nah, this is martin the reason yeah. why I do, i'm a real stickler for that because yeah. you're because is your what was your granddad's name on the other side was it martin as well no it was john it was john so yeah. dad's dad's john and then mum's was your mum's on mum's on dad's side there was so uh, dad's dad was JJ, so John Joseph. I always get this confused. Yeah. Dad's John James, and then Jonathan, Jonathan Joseph. So there's they're all JJ. Of, there's a lot of J's in there. And then it even goes back a lot, a lot more further yeah. than that. Yeah, they're all JJ. So it yeah, was yeah. John for a while, but then yeah. Oh, my mum and Joseph. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, they're all JJ. So yeah. There you go. Now thanks for doing this, mate. Really appreciate it. No, um, no, first I guest on the um, what have I called it? The Authentic Convos podcast. Now we. We might change that name, we don't know, but that's what we're running for the start. So we'll go with that, but I really appreciate it. No, um, good no luck with everything as well. You're in pre-season obviously now, so I'm sure yep. come up to the hotter months, you'll be um, knackered, absolutely knackered. No doubt, yeah. You'll deal with it a bit better now, hopefully from... Yeah, getting used to it a little bit, getting, getting a bit older. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so good luck with everything. Yeah. I uh, really do appreciate you doing this. No, no worries. Thanks, mate. No, Cheers. Thanks. thanks for having me. So.